Living in a tiny house can be challenging at times. Even if you're a minimalist, you still have to have some stuff, and so storage in tiny house design becomes incredibly important. In this episode, we wanted to take a look back at some of our absolute favorite and most ingenious storage solutions that we've seen on the show so far. When you're designing a tiny house, it's so important to utilize each and every possible inch of the space that you can. And we've found some great examples of people who have done this incredibly cleverly by utilizing cavities within the ceiling, the floor, and the walls. In Sacramento, California, Shalina has found loads of extra storage space by utilizing a cavity within the ceiling. I've built a lot of storage space into this kitchen. I've got these drop-down cabinets up here. And also I have some roll-out storage here, which I could show you. Oh wow, that is a yeah. lot of storage. Yeah. And I love how you've used all of these cavities, because normally the space under the loft is just completely wasted, right. but you've really used every little inch in here, haven't you? Yes. And then over here, I have the storage built in along the floor, and that was actually a way for me to camouflage the wheel well. Um, one of my wheel wells is actually under the couch, and then the other one is built in to these storage spaces down here. It just kind of looks like one big long step, and it actually leads into the bedrooms as well. Very clever design. In their traveling tiny house in France, Yuna and Jonathan have used additional ceiling storage space for all of their entertainment and gaming needs. So we nerds and <laughs> we love uh, watching movies and uh, playing with PlayStation and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had to, it was an obligation for us to uh, think about a place to play. Um, to play and work. Most of the time we are here. It's yeah. uh, the, the place we use the most in the house. Split levels are great for creating different zones in the house and can also be used for creating extra storage, such as in Trish and Saul's tiny home in San Diego. I especially like what you've done in here with the shift of levels between the living room and the kitchen. Yeah, so um, the wheel wells do come up about a foot high, so um, what we wanted to do was use all the space that we could. So we do have a his and hers closet that pulls out. Each closet bay is about seven feet by three feet. Uh, so they made great open drawers for us for our clothing. In Wellington, Kim and James have used split-level design in their shipping container home to create entertaining space and even store their bed. And so how does everything work underneath here with the bed and everything? Mm. What's that set up like? <laughs> okay, well, first thing we've got over here, I guess, is the step, uh, which also doubles as a trunk. And then on the sides, we've got two long side trunks. So one each, they're both two meters long. And so each one of these pulls out. It's just felt on the bottom. So the felt slides on the smooth floor and there's heaps of storage in here for clothes or whatever. The good thing about these is that they open up and you've got cushions the whole way along. So you can flip over as many of those as you need. There is a dining table down here. When we made these drawers, there's actually a space at the back of the cavity. So we chucked a little door in, not knowing what we would use it for and eventually we made this table to fit the space. And so that comes out from there and is a fold down table that does coffee table height and dining table height and gets wider and things like that. <laughs> that is yeah. such a clever idea. And then what about the bed? How does that all work? Right, the bed is yeah, sort of the main innovation that lets everything else work. And it is attached to the front trunk. So that pulls out from here. About there, and then we have a lockable caster here, and that's in place. And it just completely tucks out of the way when not in use. That's right. Yep. You don't really have to make it in the morning, it just rolls away. <laughs> the raised floor area in Jeremy and Casey's Oklahoma tiny house has a special drawer train to fully capitalize on all of the space. We raised the kitchen because we wanted a multi use counter space right here, we wanted it to be kind of a bar and also a counter. Along with, um, we rock climb, we have a lot of outdoor gear. So we also put storage underneath all of this so we can pull it out. It's kind of like a train almost. Yeah. You pull it out, you can unlatch it and then get the next one and it goes all the way, this whole length. Oh wow, yeah. fantastic. It goes all the way back to this mm -hmm. one. 
Great. It really is neat that you've built in so much storage so that you can still have all of the stuff for your hobbies then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keeping the storage open and changeable, architect Doug in Wanaka has designed a super clever wall shelf system for his tiny house. This is obviously my living room. And then I have my work desk, which can be changed to a day bed just by adjusting the number of boxes. And then the left hand side, the bookshelf actually holds the other end. And then I have my dining room table, which is little. And then in the living room, some people call it a magazine shelf, but it actually allows me to move my shelving around. Ah, that is clever. As well as the, um, the dining room table and I can toss things all over if I just want more shelves. So it gives me more places to put shelves, I guess, if I need them. In Melbourne, Mill's tiny house has a really interesting wall storage system, which has been cleverly built in behind a bed lift mechanism. We wanted to have a bed that went up and down for mums that went away during the day. So what we've done here, Bryce, is the lift bed, and it has a channel that goes up through the wall and then just sits up on the ceiling during the day and then comes down at night. So with the cabinetry, Bryce, everything is all soft touch. So everything and craft work and clothing and DVDs and then extra storage for pantry or the like. And then this has got storage all underneath it as well. So mum has found that she's got more storage in this space than what she had basically in one of her, you know, two of her rooms in her old house. Taking inspiration from boat design, Gary Ma and Nirvana in Australia have utilised a floor cavity to build in loads of extra storage. So this was our boat building inspiration. So we have storage all the way along here. And what I have out is sort of everyday use. Right up high, I have my big pots if I'm doing a catering job and things that I need bigger things for. And under the floor is kind of, I know they're there and I go there quite often. So that's what I've got in here. I've got spare jars, our first aid kit, a few spare pots and things and our potatoes and onions, for example. Then all this is just fairly much one long storage area. Designing a small kitchen can be especially challenging. Even in the most minimalist of kitchens, you still have pots, pans, dishes, cooking utensils and appliances, and all of these things have to have a home. Now we're going to take a look at some of the best small space kitchen storage ideas we've seen so far. Sometimes storage ideas can also add loads of character and even fun to a house, like an Ashes tiny home in Fayetteville. And then this looks like it's got a story to tell. What's that doing? Okay, so this is interesting. So this was obviously custom made. Um, (laughs) But what this does is you crank it and it lowers and raises the pot rack. Oh, no, that's a cool idea. Can we see it in action? Yeah. Okay. And then lowers all the way down. (laughs) (laughs) So I can reach it. Yeah, I usually keep the pots that I want like down there and then these are just kind of, these are for show. Yeah, but especially with all of the height here, it really is nice to have found at least some way to actually utilize that space because otherwise it would just be completely open and all just go to waste. Well, it's basically storage on my ceiling. And you do have a lot of cupboard space in this kitchen as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. I have tons of space. I would say the one... (laughs) The one, the one thing that I didn't maybe account for so much in my design is maybe like closet space. For example, like those over there, I have my clothes in there. I have some clothes in there. <laughs> You've got clothes in your kitchen I do. drawers? I do. Wow. A 40 so. by 10 foot tiny house and you've got clothes in the kitchen drawers. Yeah. But the kitchen but. is so cute, why not, right? Otherwise you're gonna be like, there's gonna be nothing in there. If you've got extra space, use it. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> in Queensland, Leah's tiny house on wheels uses extra storage space in her kitchen to even fit a laundry. And then with your kitchen area here, and again, everywhere here, I just see so much storage in this house. Yes, I like to cook, and so this kind of takes up most of the house, really. So this space from here to the wall is three metres by three metres. So I've put everything that a normal kitchen would have just a little bit more compressed. So this has a dishwasher. It actually has a washing machine. It's actually a kitchen and laundry, really. This is my main pantry here. So that pulls out and then it can be part of the kitchen. So I really enjoy using that. I also wanted to show you, I do have drawers in the kickers. 
so that's just more storage. So I have that here and also down here. Great, very, very clever using that space, isn't it? Yeah, it's great for those kind of tray items. In small space design, we often talk about multifunctional furniture, and one of the simplest ways of making something multifunctional is to build storage into it. We see that all the time, especially with beds and couches. Here are some of our favorites. Over in Sydney, Marnie and Dan have used a bed lift mechanism to create an epic play area for their daughter. So we also have this really cool storage underneath. Initially, when we first moved in, it was actually used as storage, but as the girls' needs have changed, our elder daughter needed somewhere that she could play. So we've made this into a really cool play space for oh, the girls. No way. Yeah, I'll show you. That is such a cool idea. <laughs> yeah. Ella must absolutely love this. She does, she does. It's like a little play cave. Not everything has been purpose built for the kids, but we've really tried to make the spaces work for them. So it's a fun house as well. Amy and Rich have raised their bed considerably in their shipping container home in Melbourne, which has created an amazing amount of extra storage space. This is cool. It's really interesting how high you've raised the bed. A big thing, as we've mentioned, was the storage and making everything as functional as possible. So we decided to pick the bed up off the ground so we could have that storage. And this is a queen size bed? That's correct. So within those dimensions, that really does just give you a tremendous amount of volume underneath it to turn into storage. Yeah, and these drawers are full depth for the whole uh, depth of the, uh, the queen mattress. So very generous amount of storage. That's really cool. And that is a very neat drawer. Someone's taught you to fold. <laughs> Thank you very much, just Amy. <laughs> <laughs> and in Germany, Ness's DIY underbed storage solution has created lots of space for all of her things, keeping her house nice and tidy. And then over here, we've got your bed. Yeah, it's pretty big. And I wanted to have a space that looks super comfortable and also have some storage. So that's why I implemented these uh, shelves. Nice. And then have you built some storage here as well? Yeah, it's actually full of storage. When you fold it up, you can access these uh, drawers that I built and they have even more storage than I actually need. So I'm glad to have some extra just in case. Over in British Columbia, Lance's under bed storage space in his shipping container home even has a built in bed warmer. Uh, this is my bedroom. Also with design in mind and max amount of storage as possible, I designed a few cool features in this bed. I've got three pull out drawers that fully pull out all the way. They're about five feet long each. So plenty of clothes storage there all seasons long, as well as uh, the platform of the bed is actually designed with holes in it and a space for a heater inside one of the drawers. So in the winter, I turn the heater on and it actually heats up the mattress and it's very, very nice. Nadia and Kester's Zen Tiny House in Byron Bay is packed full of amazing storage ideas, especially their under couch storage. And then it looks like you've also actually built a whole lot of storage into this space as well. Absolutely, we've got storage everywhere. This is Kester's man shed. He's got all of his tools. That's a very tidy man shed. It's a very tidy man shed, isn't it? <laughs> Not so manly. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a uh, shoe drawer in here, which I'm quite proud of. This was my one little bit of um, woodworking. I made the little shelves for all our shoes. Oh, so wow. that's quite a lot of space for, you know, a tiny house and shoes. That's really nicely done. But we also have 900 depth underneath the window box. So you can just lift these up and it's super deep storage under there as well. So we are not wanting for storage, it's brilliant. If you're designing a tiny house with a sleeping loft, then obviously you need a way to access that loft. One of the best ways of doing that is to build in stairs. Stairs give you fast, simple, easy access to the loft and an opportunity to build an incredible amount of storage into your tiny house. Molly and Ken's tiny house in Texas has storage stairs which even fits their wardrobe. And then these stairs. This is a really cool design. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you much. Thank you very much. What's great about the stairs is that these first three steps do have storage in them. And then the last five steps, we do have coat closets and whatnot that we store mm -hmm. work clothes, casual clothes. Yeah, we found um, these decals and got them to fit the stairs and put them on. And we could not be happier with the look of them and the functionality of the stairs alone. We're very pleased of how they turned out. 
We love our furry family members, but their things take up space too. And over in British Columbia, Oliver and Sarah's tiny house has some super clever built-in storage space for their dog. So uh, our dog owns this space here. <laughs> she has a little kennel. That's only for the odd time you have to put her in there. And then she has like a full drawer to herself. <laughs> Not gonna lie, she also has a couple drawers in the kitchen, but we won't get into that. Yeah, we tuck the washer dryer combo under there as well as the fridge. Um, and then we just have an extra drawer on top there for things like laundry detergent mm -hmm. and an extra toilet paper. It's nice to be able to utilize the stairs for basically all of the appliance storage and yes. in, in terms of the big stuff and then have some extra storage for things like pets or what have you. If you're looking for an extra compact storage stair design which saves space in the home but still provides lots of storage, Jesse's tiny home in Melbourne is a great example of how this can be achieved. So I wanted compact storage slash entrance into the loft. I've seen a lot of designs where the stairs come along the side of the house, which I find takes up a lot of usable space. So this way, having the stairs packed in in a little neat corner with drawers, it just made sense to me. And if you don't have room for any stairs at all, this ladder slash bookshelf idea in Thomas' tiny house in France is a really great idea. And then on this wall over here, you've got the ladder and then all of the storage space. Yes, we have this great space for putting things. And uh, on this library, the library is really important. In a tiny house, you don't have a lot of things, but you have uh, things important, so you want to see. So I like the idea of big library because I have all my little objects and few books, but books, which means something. Yeah. And so connected to the library, you have the ladder to go on the loft. Some tiny house bathrooms are kept incredibly simple, while others see it as an opportunity to build even more storage space into their home. Here are some great examples of that. Colin and Megan's tiny bathroom really shows off Colin's experience as a cabinet maker. Lots of storage built in here as well. You yep. want me to show you the storage? I sure do. The storage is pretty cool. It's using the space that's in underneath and behind the steps coming up through here. So starting, say, here, a little push cupboard that just stores toilet rolls or whatever. Uh, pull out shelf here, which is where our towels can go. Dirty clothes basket here. And even here, there's a pull-out bench, which is which is actually has a 100 kg runner, so you can sit on it if you want to. That is very clever. You're definitely showing off your past as a cabinet maker in this one. It's Use a few more. Uh, little bit of space there extra, so we thought on a rainy day, maybe an extra hanging rail might be useful, as well as somewhere to pop that. And one of the coolest things is this corner could have just been like two bits of walls with a with a lost piece of space, but instead of that, we've built in a cupboard all the way up the corner there. That is mm. seriously cool. Bathrooms often have lots of unused space and items which aren't always in use. CJ and Amy's traveling tiny house in New Zealand has a pull-out toilet to create lots of extra room. And then over here, we've got your bathroom. Yeah, so um, it's a pretty compact area. As you see here, there's a cupboard. But underneath, if we open up these doors, there's our composting toilet. And it just basically slides out and slides in back in when you're not using it. But the best thing about this is that the space over the top of the toilet now is usable for storage. That is such a clever idea. Yeah, we thought so too. The same goes for showers, such as this amazing design in Kari's tiny house in Portland. And then hiding around the corner here, we've got your toilet and basin. This is really nice how this has all been done. Thank you so much. I had debated about whether I wanted to have a basin in the bathroom area, but I'm really glad that I did. And this little basin fits right above the toilet. But no shower in here. Actually, I do have a shower. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Oh, that is clever. So one of the things that my dad had discerned while doing his research is the shower is a really unused space as far as square footage. He had seen a similar project on another tiny home, but it was a very small wardrobe that moved in and out of a shower space. And so he thought, let's expand that. Let's make that bigger. So we did. So I have this full-size wardrobe that sits over my shower for the majority of the day. And then I roll it out of the way when I need to use the shower. And I have this really nice open space to use.
Not everybody wants to wear a black t-shirt every day. So if you think you need a little bit of extra space to store your clothes, here are some ideas. Going way back to an old favorite, Justin and Yola's castle truck has an amazing rotating wardrobe. This is one of my favorite parts of the truck. Wow, that is such <laughs> a cool idea. And automatic lighting, if you didn't notice. First time, you get to see it this time. Yeah. You didn't think that was enough space to utilize it, we got that too. Wow. <laughs> and for a luxury option, Lisa and Matt's stunning modern tiny house in Sydney has a super classy his and hers wardrobe. And then moving over here, what is going on with these mirrors? There are wardrobes. Right. His and hers. So we've got lots of hanging storage. And then we've got a bunch of drawers which open up all on soft closing so you can slam them all as much as you like. And then we've also got a um, walk-in wardrobe light. Now that really does give you both quite a lot of clothes storage, doesn't it? Yeah, we do. It means we've got one each and we're not fighting over hanging space. One of the coolest compact clothes storage ideas we've seen is in Chris and Mariella's tiny house in Auckland, which has an epic crawl-in closet with built-in laundry chute. And then, look at what you've done over here with your closet space. That is just so clever. <laughs> yeah, we kind of jokingly call this the crawl-in closet. Um, it's not quite a walk-in closet, but it's still really quite spacious. And I'm able to store a lot of clothing and some of my other bits and bobs and keep it kind of out of sight. And is that hanging clothes storage that you've got there as well? Yeah, exactly. So it's always good to have a little bit of an option to have hanging clothes as well. This is where Chris keeps all his clothes and this is also where we've got our washing chute with the washing going down. There really is no limit to human creativity. It's wonderful to look back at these past tours and see all of the really clever ways that people have built storage into their tiny homes. Personally, it makes me incredibly excited for the future and all of those small space storage ideas that we've yet to discover.